and verse 1. Let's use that to confirm our scripture. Second Timothy. Let's all go there. Chapter 1. I want to establish this with uh, this scripture to make us understand that destiny is real. I read. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. I read again. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Look at that. By the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ. Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God. Now, it means that he became an apostle because uh, the will of God over his life is that he should become an apostle. Now, and it was according to the promise. So, when we talk about destiny, we are talking about a pre-planned event. Hallelujah. Now, and if you look at other words closer to it, you can use the word destination. A dest uh, is where you are going. What is has been pre-planned to happen. It's like when we talk about you watching a movie. A movie has been planned. Whether you watch it from the beginning or from the middle. Uh, we were watching a film in our house yesterday. And it was a very interesting movie. But my children had to do a lot of fast forward. They didn't touch the movie, but they have watched it. So it was so interesting that we, we, I and my wife wanted to know the end. So they had to tell us the end of the movie when we are still at the middle, you know. It was so interesting that we wanted to know that uh, this thing, how did it not happen? So, but because they've already told us we were no longer, uh, uh, we were no longer desperate again. Okay, this is what we happen at the end and things and things, you know. So, but in the case of destiny, hear me, destiny is not automatic. God has planned it what he wants us to become. He has planned it. But do you know that he has planned it, you know, but he's leaving it up to us. To make a choice. Now look at what happened in the Garden of Eden. That's uh, in Genesis 3. The Bible talks about the, uh, the tree are planted at the middle of the garden. And God instructed man, don't eat from this tree. From this tree, man will begin to die. But if you don't eat from this tree, man will begin to enjoy eternal life. Everlasting life. Which means man will live without dying. Man will not die. Now if man had not eaten that fruit, we would have, been, we would have known our great, great grandparents. You know, man, uh, uh, nobody will have been buried. Praise the Lord. But man made a choice. That's why we need to pray today so that destiny will not fail concerning us. I pray for you and for myself. Destiny will not fail in Jesus' name. So just like I wrote down in my notes, destiny is what, whatever is, uh, we call it a pre-planned purpose of God for everyone. A pre-planned purpose of God for everyone. What God has planned for us. May we get there in Jesus' name. And like we know, in, according to Jeremiah 33, 11, it shows us that the plan of God for every man is good. The plan of God for everyone. So there is nobody that God planned any evil for. But it is the way we live our lives that will determine if we will enter into the plan and purpose of God for our lives. So, from 1 Samuel 17, 1 to 58, we are going to be taking eight different categories of prayers. You know, it's a prayer meeting. I'm not going to be teaching. Eight different categories of prayer. Let's look at the first category. Hallelujah. The first category will be taken from verse 13 to verse 20 of 1 Samuel chapter 17. I want to read 13 to 20. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. 15. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And Jesus said unto David his son, Take now 
for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn, and then, and this, uh, sorry, ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren. 18. And carry these ten cheese unto the captain of their thousands, and look how thy brother fair, thy, thy brethren fair, and take their pledge. 19. Now Saul and, and they, and all the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. Verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse, Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now, when I was studying, uh, God, was, God told me something that uh, this 1 Samuel chapter 17 is a clear um, uh, proof of how you can pray yourself into destiny. Now, follow me. It's a clear, I can call it a map or, or, on how you can put yourself into God's plan for your life. It's a map. I will show you as we go on. Now, if you look at, before this verse, if you read from verse 1, see that David was already in the service of King Saul. You know, he was employed in chapter 16 as an instrumentalist for King Saul. Hallelujah. So, as at the time we are talking about it, David was already a man with a very good job. He was working as an instrumentalist of the king, or we can use the word president of Israel. You know, as at that time, they used king instead of president. So if you bring it as at today, David was the instrument of the president. So he was working at the presidency. It's like somebody is working at Asorok. So as at this particular day, before his father came, called him to send him on errand, he already had what? A good job. He was collecting a good pay. Now, and if you also go back again, you will notice that in chapter 16, David was already anointed by Samuel as the next king. Hallelujah. As the man to succeed who? Saul. So there are two things in his favor. He was already carrying the anointing of a king. And two, he was already playing instrument at the palace. He was well paid. When his father now called him. Now look at the first one. The first thing we are going to be praying about. But let me just explain the point first. He, David, submitted himself for his father's errand. He submitted himself. Now, and listen, God told me this. I wrote it down. I want to read it out the way God told me that I wrote it down. You know what God told me? He said, um, um, where is it? I, I wrote it somewhere. I want to read it. Now, God said to me that, son, humility is the gateway into purpose. Humility is the gateway into divine purpose. Humility is the gateway into divine purpose. Now, which means that there is no how you can enter into the purpose of God for your life if you allow the spirit of pride. There is no how. Now, God has a plan. If you read through chapter 17, you will see that chapter 17 was what gave David what we call global relevance. May you have global relevance. Now, the entire world, starting from the Israelites, started to respect him from that day. But what gave him access to global relevance? He submitted himself. A man who was already working at the presidency, a man who was already ordained king was still humble enough to allow his father to send him on errand. His father called him like an ordinary man, like everybody would say, David, sir, come and take food to your brothers in the camp and go and check them for me. Now, at the level that David was operating, imagine, at the level that David was operating, he was still humble enough. He was still humble enough to do what? To submit to his father in order to run errand for him. Now, and that was his first test. God told me that, listen, one of the reasons why so many people will miss out in the purpose of God for their life is the spirit of pride. 
eni idiraga ni oni je ki opolopo eniyan le wo nu eto olorun fun aye won because the first step into greatness is that god will a uh, a uh, a uh, put in your direction what we call divine errand to now make, to now look at you you will now view you to see if you are going to run that errand or you will allow the spirit of pride to deprive you pray in the name of jesus that the spirit of pride will not have a place in your heart in jesus name like i said he was already divinely appointed as the next king of israel and he already had a job at the palace that's presidency he was living fine he was not struggling now and i wrote here it means that the first key needed to enter into destiny like i said earlier is humility now and that's where we're going to take our first point of prayer from now there was a time the, our women was having they were having a program and their study was seven things that god hates now it's in the book of proverbs and one of the things that god hates god talk about a proud look i don't know whether you have read that portion before god said i hate pr- people that have proud look you know what it means to have a proud look everything to you is showing pride pride is the reason why so many people will not enter into purpose now and i want you to know that pride is a spirit at times they put the image of pride upon people so when people see them these people are humble in mind but they look proud when people see them they judge them by their appearance and they decide to close certain doors against them so but david passed that test he made himself available you know and he ran errand for his father hallelujah i i say it again it means that the first key need, first key that in order to enter into destiny is what it is first key needed in order to enter into destiny is humility and i will also say it in a reverse form the first weapon of the devil to distract you from destiny is pride the first weapon of the devil to distract you from destiny is what is pride the spirit of pride is the reason why several people have been distracted from entering into purpose can we pray our first point of prayer when i say it's time to pray you will jump up you will take those prayers and you will sit down again we we'll take the second study and we pray what is the first point of prayer look at this prayer you will say may the spirit of pride never take hold of my heart in the name of jesus now listen pride does not start from the looks it starts from where from the heart i was listening to bishop um uh bishop uh, dag dag mill you know very powerful message la- sometimes last week he said god said to him uh i want you to go and see archbishop benson dausa for him to pray for you so bishop archbishop benson dausa was being invited by another bishop that's bishop duncan williams so the late archbishop now came to bishop duncan williams church to minister while he was preaching Bishop Doug Mills was seated on the altar, was seated in one of the important chairs on the altar. And people that know Archbishop knows that when he makes illustration, he may be preaching and come near you and begin to tap your head. So he was preaching on, and he got to where Bishop Doug Mills was seated, and he was tapping Doug Mills' head. Ah, you know, and was using him for illustration. Doug Mills said he got angry. Ah, ah, what's wrong with this man? Why is he just hitting my head like as if I'm a boy? Now, does he not know that I'm a bishop like him? Does he not know that I'm a general overseer? Now, he said that was what was crossing his mind. And where he sat, he started taking offense. That, in fact, this rubbish must stop. I don't think I will go to this man. So, after the meeting, Archbishop went to the hotel room to sleep. Duncan, uh, bishop Duncan Williams and uh, uh, Bishop uh, Doug Mills, they all went to their various houses. But Doug Mills said, God said to him, I have a blessing. For you from this man, will you allow the spirit of pride to away from you? So he said, he jumped up, called Bishop Duncan Williams, and they went to Archbishop's hotel. He said, as he entered Archbishop's hotel, Archbishop laughed. He laughed. I was just laughing. I was looking at him. I said, so you didn't, he said, he, he, so you were not angry. Kneel down. Let me pray for you. He said, and Archbishop prayed for him. 
the following week, it was announced that Archbishop had to be with the Lord. Can you see how the spirit of pride? So many people have not entered into God's purpose for their life today. Not because they are not good. They have not entered because they are proud. Because you have to pass through a humble passage to get to the place of destiny. Let's pray. take our first point of prayer. Say after me. May the spirit of pride never take hold of me in the name of Jesus. Jump up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Oh Lord, help me, oh God, that the spirit of pride will not succeed. So take hold of me in the name of Jesus. Are you talking to the Lord? Ragada basende. Begin to pray. Lord, may the spirit of pride never succeed. To take hold of me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Ragada basende. May the spirit of pride not have a place in my life, Lord. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to tell the Lord. I rebuke the spirit of pride. May it not have a place in my heart, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Ragada Begin to rebuke that spirit of pride. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name we have prayed and amen. Now look up. Under it, you will say, say after me, remove from me, O God, every image or placed upon me that makes people think I'm proud. You know, some people are humble and you don't know why people are saying, every wrong image that has been placed upon me that makes people to believe that I am proud. Father, let it be removed right now. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Let it be removed. The image. Lord, placed upon me, O God. Making, me, making people to believe that I am proud. My Father, let it be removed in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Santa Yangadaba. Regada. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O God. Every, every proud look. Lord, I rebuke it from my appearance in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it from my appearance, O God. Lord, help me, O God, that the wicked will not be able to cast upon me the spell of pride in the name of Jesus. Image of pride. Get out of my, get out of me in the name of Jesus. I pull you off. Begin to pull them off now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed and amen. Be seated. Add more fire to your prayers. Add more fire to your prayer. Let's take number two. Now, this number two eh, is the reason why I accepted an emergency ministration. Look at what God showed me this morning in my morning devotion. The second thing that made David to enter into purpose is this. He was able to recognize his golden moments. See, if you miss your golden moment, you will remain struggling. Now, when we talk about a golden moment, a golden moment is an opportunity that God by himself creates for you to shine. Now, let's look at how he discovered his. Look at verse 22. To verse 27 of 1 Samuel 17. 22 to 27. Let's go there. 22 to 27. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Are you there? 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spoke according to the same words, and did what? And David had them. Hmm, let's go on. We stop at verse 27. 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were so afraid, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? They were talking to David now. Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free from Israel. 27. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, 
what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the army of the living God? 27. They were not supposed to answer him because he was a boy. Look at 27. And the people answered him after the manner saying, so shall it be done to the man who did what? Who killed him. Now, look up. Look up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wrote a question here. How do we discover or recognize our golden moment? How? Your golden moment, listen, is the opportunity that is waiting for your preparation. You know, something you have been prepared for all your life, and all of a sudden, they give you opportunities to perform it. Some people miss their golden moments. I'm telling you, a lot of people miss their golden moments. And they, they continue struggling. May you not miss your own. I say, may you not miss your own. We discover our golden moments. One, there will be a prompt from within. There will be a prompting from within. There will be a prompting from within. There will be something like an awakening. When I say prompting, an awakening. Something will awaken you somehow. Opportunity We had the testimony of one of our daughters on Sunday here. Look at how she said she has been coming to mama when things, her husband's business collapsed. Husband's business collapsed. And she usually come to mama. And she and mama will be praying. Mama will always pray every Sunday. But the day the golden moment came, beloved, look at how it happened. She was invited by a family member for a wedding. Now, she went for that wedding. Now, on the day of the wedding, hear me, hear me, she could not wait to meet the groom. I think the man is the groom. Yes, of the day. But she took photograph with them. And that's what, that was it. After some time, the person that invited her, the family relative that invited her, died, was already, you know, died. And the person that did the wedding was now calling, you know, to greet people and called her. How are you, auntie? And she said, auntie, she said, and she said, ah, business, bye-bye, it collapse. Are you sure? He said, yes. That was what the person said. So, there's nothing you are doing. He said, nothing I'm doing. And the person said, don't worry. I will send some goods from abroad to you as a start to help you stand. Push it very near. She said it was like she was just dreaming. It didn't look real to her. She came and told mama. Mama, they prayed together. Before she said she got a dream, she saw that somebody gave her something from abroad and she woke up. She was saying, in the dream. And she woke up. She discovered her. Ah, not knowing that the goods were already almost close to Nigeria. Few days after she got a call and that was it. She said she told the husband, husband it's a lie. It doesn't happen like that. When the husband followed her to the place to carry the goods, the husband was shocked. Now, what am I saying? There's what we call your golden moment. An opportunity of a lifetime. An opportunity to do what you know how to do in a place where you can be highly rewarded. Imagine if David decided not to come to respond to his father's errand. Imagine if he didn't come at the time that his father told him to go. You know, there are, I used to tell my children too, there's what we call prompt obedience. Now, there's what we call ordinary obedience. For instance, if I just say, Apple, stand up. Okay, sir. And maybe after 40 minutes, he decided to stand up. Is that prompt? No. He obeyed me, but at his convenience. If I say, Apo, stand up. And he stood up. Instantly. That's prompt to be there. I want us to pray. You are going to pray that you will not miss your golden moments. Amen? I didn't hear you. Say after me. May I not miss? I didn't hear. May I not miss my golden moments? Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Help me, oh God. 
that I will always be at the right place and at the right time. Jump up on your feet and begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Father, help me, O oh God, that I will not miss my golden moments. May I always be at the right place and at the right time, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Right place at the right time. Right place at the right time, O oh God. Help me to always be, to always be at the right place. I will know how to be at the right place at the right time in Jesus' name. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O oh God, that I will not miss my golden moments, O oh God. David did not miss his own. Thank God that he was able to hear the bragging of Goliath. Ah, begin to pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O God, that in, the, in ministry, Lord, in life, Lord, I will not miss my golden moments in the name of Jesus. The opportunity that you, God, have created for me. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for yourself. May I not miss it, O God. Are you praying? 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 Pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O God. Lord, help me, O God. Lord, help me, O God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. Please receive it. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you follow the prompting of the Spirit of God that will lead you to your place of opportunities in Jesus' name. Now, let's go on. I discovered the third thing that leads us into purpose. He did not allow discouragers to make him miss his time. He did not allow discouragers. Look at verse 28 to verse 31. Verse 28 to verse 31. 31, verse 28 to verse 31. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled, he will be against David. And he said, Why, sorry, where am I? Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mayest see the battle. That's the reason why you came. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a curse? What have I done? Is there not a curse? What have I done, my brother? Verse 30. And he turned from him towards another, and speak after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And look at 31. Thank God that he was not discouraged. And when the words were heard, which David sp uh, spake, hmm, they rehearsed him, them before Saul and his saints for him. Now look up. You know, I discovered something. Every single time you hear the voice of discouragers becoming loud, can I tell you the truth? You are closer to your victory. Every single time the voice of critics becomes loud, I want you to know that you are closer to your victory. You are closer to your testimony. How do I know this? The Bible says, and Eliab had him discussing with those men, and he got angry. What are you discussing with them? What's wrong with you? I know you. you this boy. I know what is in your mind. You always like to, 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 to see, see and see and see. To do church, church. You know, that's what you like to do. And David said, uh -uh, is there not a reason for me to even wait? The Bible says, as he answered his brother, he turned to another person and was asking the same question. What would be done for anyone that kills this Goliath? Uh -uh. And the Bible says, while he was asking in that verse, somebody had it. And the person now went to tell Saul, there's one boy here. This boy is asking some very, very confident, uh, 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 strong questions. Question that reveals that he's very bold. This young man is asking powerful questions. And the Bible says, Saul said, bring him. If he had allowed the voice of discouragers, the voice of critics, he wouldn't have known that he was closer to his victory. 
Some of you, the moment anybody discourage you or uh, accuse you, make jests of you, or say anything that makes you feel bad, you run straight into your shell. Winners don't do that. Men and women of destiny don't do that. In fact, can I tell you this truth? On the pathway to fulfilling your purpose, you will hear several voices of critics. Ah, I want your sorrow. Getting to the point, you just just like well, I my wife, we're discussing it. Like, look at the gospel artists that were, that died. Marital crisis issue led to her death. Even the people that their husband have not slapped before, that are looking for how to bail out from marriage, we use this opportunity now. Because everybody on the internet is now what? Is a counselor. If your house is hot, jump out of the marriage. If your house is hot, jump, jump out of the marriage. Ah, if that man or that woman is tough, jump out of the Everybody is canceling now. But listen, this is the time that kingdom-minded people will understand that their marriage is close to the realm of milk and honey. Yes, you are closer to Canaan now. Thank God that David didn't give up. Imagine if David had been silenced by his brother Eliab. He wouldn't have known that he needed only one more person to hear him before the king will hear him. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be discouraged. Yes, I want you to say it boldly. I refuse to be discouraged. It's only one more person that is needed. Kid David, you are okay out there to sue me. A bomb is in King Ben Midake, a bomb is okay, be Moshiman Shinoni, a moman fair to Juba Bugun Kong, as a two coming, as a two coming, and in fact, in fact, Utia Toge, Utia Toge, a bear King Rapada, King Rapada King. You know, no. If there's anything you should be praying for now, pray for fresh fire. Fire to be more committed to the right thing. Fire to be more committed closer to, to, to your purpose. I had the story of a man before we begin to pray. This man had this information that there is this particular land that is like a gold gold mine. That they said somebody said there is gold on this land. So the young man gathered money together, you know, and went to buy the land. And employed men to come and dig for him. They started digging and digging and digging. You know, we have a gold mine at uh, Elisha. There's another one in, in several places of Nigeria. If you go to gold mines, you will see that most times they dig even up to 100 feet downwards. They, they, they were digging. They couldn't find anything. We were told, I read it in a book, that this man now got discouraged and put that land for sale. Not knowing that he was only four feet away from gold. He had, been, he had dug, you know, he had started digging. He had dug that land. He had been digging for months. They didn't get, he didn't know there were just only four feet away. So he now put his land for sale and sold it at a very ridiculous price. Because he was discouraged. You know, if you are discouraged, so many negative things, things that you don't think you can do is what you will do. If you are discouraged, you can even put your own destiny for sale. Yeah. If you are discouraged, why do people commit suicide? It's a level of discouragement. I was watching one. The lady sat on Todd Milan Bridge. She wanted to jump into the river. And people were begging her. She said, no, I'm fired. I'm just tired of life. I'm just tired of life. You know where me, I, I got the fire from that I, makes me not to get discouraged to that point? It was many years ago. That movie the, on NTA, I know they will have not given back to so many people that time. They used to call it a key car. In those days on NTA, Alagba, by your fallity, is the one that usually write the story. He will write a story and they will act it. So this particular man in that movie, he was tired of life. 
he now said he wanted to die. In the process, he put a gun in his own mouth and shot himself. So while he was now going, in that Yoruba movie, they said he met the Eleda, that is Adeda, Eleda, that's our God, our creator. Our God now showed him, in that movie, he said God now showed him that he needed one more year for him to become great. The man now started crying, please send me back, send me back. He said it's late. Once you cross from that place to here, you can't return. Praise the Lord. So that man that sold the land, he sold that land for a ridiculous price. The person that bought it too heard about gold. They only dug four feet. And they found gold. When the other man had it, out of disappointment in himself, he committed suicide. Say after me. Are you sad? I refuse to lose my zeal. In any way in the name of Jesus. My zeal for the Lord. My zeal for my home. Zeal for my life. Zeal for prosperity. Zeal for what is right. I will not lose my zeal. In the name of Jesus. Jump upon your feet and begin to pray. Begin to pray for yourself. I will not lose my zeal. In the name of Jesus. I will not lose my zeal for the Lord. I will not lose my zeal for my life of progress. In the name of Jesus. I will not lose my zeal for the right thing. In the name of Jesus. I will not bow to the voice of the critics. Begin to pray for yourself. I will not bow to the voice of the critics in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? May I not bow to the voice of critics in the name of Jesus. I will not lose my zeal. No, no matter what discouragers are saying or doing against me, Lord, I say, I will not lose my fire. Are you praying? Are you praying? Pray for yourself. Ragadaba, I will not give up in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, help me, O God. Help me, O God. I know I am closer to victory now. In the name of Jesus, may I not lose my zeal. Lord, may the, may the, may the, may the attitude of the nine not discourage me. May the attitude of the nine not discourage me, O God. Help me, O God. In the name of Jesus, are you praying for yourself? Ragada basenile, regada basata ya gada baskene, shangada ba, ringu yada ba. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, O God, that I will not lose my zeal. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. And amen. Now look up before you sit down. I want you to know. That in this life, if you are going to excel, you must know how to manage the stones the enemies are throwing at you. If you are too quiet, they will say you are deceiving the people. If you are too vocal, they will say you lack self-control. So listen, the easiest way to fail in life is you living your life to please everyone. Imagine if David had said, when his brother said, come and go back to those ships you left. And he decided to keep his mouth shut. Don't forget, it was a golden moment that God had created for him. His father sent him to come and deliver food. It was there he, he saw Goliath and had his threat. Now he's asking questions that will bring him close to fulfillment. Somebody is saying, your two no is too much. Your two no is too much. You are going to pray for yourself. Say after me, I will not bow to the voice of the critics in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray for yourself. They will criticize you. They will criticize your choice. May I not bow to the voice of critics, O oh God. Begin to pray. May I not bow to the voice of critics. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Now quickly sit down. Sit down. We don't have all the time. I have about 15 minutes more. Let's look at our fourth prayer. I think we're in the fourth one now. Prayer point number four. Praying yourself into what? Into destiny. Number four. His testimony made way for him. Look at verse 32 to 37. 
Now, when we talk about your testimony here, I will share it. I will explain. 32 to 37. Look at this. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail. Because of him, thy servant will go and fight with the Philistines. Then verse 33, and Saul said to David, thou art, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Now look at David. Okay, I mean, not, maybe that I've not gone to battle before, but listen to my testimony. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a, a lamb out of the floor. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the, of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. You know what I want to share with you here? Everything you are going through in this life is peculiar to you and it's for the purpose of the challenges you will face later. Everything you are facing now is to prepare you for the challenge that you will face before you enter into fulfillment. Are you hearing me? That you are facing the lion, you are facing the bear. It's not what every other person is facing. That's why I understand that nobody has your kind of challenge. Hello? Nobody has what? Your kind of challenge. Your own kind of challenge is peculiar to you. My kind of challenge is peculiar to me. But I want you to understand that make, you must make up your mind to overcome those challenges because the testimonies of those challenges is what will open doors for you. Are you hearing me? Do, that's what we open doors for you. When they hear, eh, you were raised by a single parent, yes, so that was what I was raised. When they begin to hear, oh, you didn't go to school, oh, yes, so, ah, you sponsored yourself in school, yes, so. That's why. Don't be ashamed or afraid to share your testimonies. Because look at now. They were talking about Goliath. He was talking about the lion. Does he correlate? No. I expected them to say, ah, I say you can't face this Philistine champion. This man that has been a champion from his youth. You are saying you killed lion. You killed bear. Ah, what is the connection? But instantly they had his testimony. They believed it. Don't joke with your Christian testimony. Whatever you face in life that you conquer, see it as one of the things that will open doors for you tomorrow. Are you getting me? Now, you are going to now pray. What is the next prayer? Father, make way for me before the mighty and the great. Uluwa lana for me. Niwaju awe niyonla. How come they believe his story? They were the ones that now told you, okay, you know what, you know what, okay. Come and go and face him. Make way for me, O oh God. Before the mighty, before the great, O oh God. Father, please make way for me. Shall we begin to pray? Let's begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to ask that the Lord, he is the maker of ways. O oh God, make way for me. Uluwa for me. In the name of Jesus. Use my testimony, O God, to give me breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Father, make way before for me, O God. Father, make way. Make way. You are the way maker. You are the way maker. You are the way maker. O God, make way for me. In the name of Jesus, are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Ring gada basi, ring guliada ba, basata yanga da baskenile, shagada bare. In the name of Jesus, O God, make way for me on every side. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Sit down, sit down, sit down. We don't have all the time. The fifth prayer I want you to pray. Now, you know this prayer is a prayer of distraction. Distraction from the path of destiny. When the devil knows that you are closer to destiny, you know what he will do? He will want to distract you. How do I know this? Let's go to verse 30, 38 and 39. Let's go. Verse 38 and 39. And Saul armed David with his armor and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. 
also he armed him with a coat of mail. Look at 39. And David guarded, guarded his sword upon his armor. And he has had to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this, for I have not prov proved them. And David did what? Put them off. Now, what is distraction? Anything that is placed in front of you to make you not to see the real thing. Anything placed in front of you in order to prevent you from seeing the real thing. When the devil wants to distract you from destiny, at times, look up, some distractions can come in form of opportunities. But if you look clearly, they are not opportunities. Now, some days ago, somebody called me and said, Pastor, 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 uh, uh, I don't know, there's this opportunity. I don't know whether you like it. You must understand what you can afford per time. Some good things are distractions. Hello? Answer me now. That's why you have to pray. Saul put that garment on him, but it was too heavy. A garment that did not allow him to walk well. How will he now stand in front of Goliath? Goliath would have just crushed him. But David was wise enough. What are those things that have been placed before you that is now distracting you? Some of you, you pick up an assignment that, is now, that has now become a distraction. Some of you, you pick up an expenses that has become a distraction. And you are saying, ah, you plan, Kolele. You must see. You know the prayer I wrote down here? The courage to say no when I have to say no. Father, give it to me in this prayer meeting. One of the reasons why so many people have not gotten into purpose is because they don't have the courage to say no. You must know how to say no if you will get to the place of fulfillment. Because it is not every good thing that will allow you to get to that place. So there are sometimes when the devil see that the speed at which you are running, ah, this speed is great. This bubble will get to his plan, the plan, no, he could just bring an opportunity. They'll just say, you come and travel out. And you know, traveling out is an opportunity compared to Nigeria of now. Some people say, even, even if I travel out and become messenger, it's better than being a manager in Nigeria. Imagine, messenger in UK is better than manager in Nigeria. I'm not saying traveling is bad, but it could distract you from purpose. That's why whenever anything comes before you, before you call it opportunity, ask the Lord, is this one right, right now? Is it good for me now? Will this one not distract me from where I'm going? Hello? David, you are a family member. Every day. It's good, but it has become a distraction. The garment of Saul had become a distraction to David. And David said, I'm sorry, I'm not used to this. If I continue to go with this, I won't get to where I'm going. I pray that God will open your understanding to discover everything that is distracting you that you have already accepted in the name of Jesus. You didn't say amen. amen. Say your amen well. Amen. So David, I mean Saul's garment, armor, was a distraction to David. Say after me. <laughs> Courage to say no. When I'm, when I'm supposed to say no. Father, release to me. Even ways, before you pray, even some of you are young people. Relationship is good, but there's a time it is not good. That you say, no, no, I don't need this now. And I always tell myself, nobody can tell you truth like yourself. 
o to to ba le so fun fun ra e o se ni to ma so fun e to ma gbo ti wa gan iwo gan bi lo wa re pe ah e dunno e dunno she get fine she kan to de kan nu aye mere you know you should be able to tell yourself she kan to kan ni courage to say no when i'm supposed to say no father release upon me open your mouth and begin to pray for yourself begin to pray for yourself in the name of jesus i can see i can hear you pray i can hear you pray in the name of jesus i receive the courage to say no when i ought to say no in the name of jesus begin to pray regada ba 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 sendele boskene shagada ba sanda yara ba ringada ba sanda yara ba skene shagada ba se ba le gada oh yeah pray 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 we don't have all the time the courage to say no when i'm supposed to say so father grant me oh god in the name of Jesus, may I not be afraid to say no when I'm supposed to. May I not be afraid of God. In the name of Jesus, now begin to rebuke the spirit of distraction. Say, Lord, I rebuke every spirit of distraction right now. In the name of Jesus, every load of distraction program for me. I refuse you. I reject you. In the name of Jesus, are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Ring you load of destruction. I reject you in the name of Jesus. I reject you in the name of Jesus. I reject you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed and amen. Please sit down. I listened to a documentary of uh, the, uh, the former world heavyweight boxing champion. Former world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. I listened to an, a documentary. They interviewed him. Tyson, you were the undisputable champion. Only three or four people were able to last 11 rounds with you. And you won, you won the bout. But most of your fights, you won by knockout. What went wrong? That made you to start to lose. He said, I was distracted by a flamboyant lifestyle. I love what he said. He was sincere. He said, number one, I bought tigers that I didn't need. Yes, he had about four tigers as his pet. And you know, they don't eat dead meat. They eat fresh. He said, then, I had this undying uh, uh, passion for fashion. I, for every color of my suit, I had a Rolls Royce. Not even uh, a, 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 a Rolls Royce. So if I have red suit, I have red Rolls Royce. Black suit, red Rolls Royce. You know, he said, that was how I lived my life. He said, and to finish me up, I had flashy women that I was spending my money on. He said, but that, how did that affect your performance on the ring? He said, it got to a point I stopped going for training. When they bring the picture of an opponent to me, I'll just look at this one. I'll knock him out in round three. If I look at this one, I'll knock him out in round four. But, so he'll just look at them and, and determine. He said, my coach kept shouting. I told him, coach, don't worry. I'm at the center of my game. He said, then I started losing. Now, why did you now bite Ivan Daoli feet on the ear when you were fighting? He said, I was frustrated. It was like three people were punching me. I will lift up my head, try to, ah, it's like, even the only feet's hand is more than two. If I was part of those that prayed for only feet that time, because my Tyson went to re, uh, renounce Christ and became a Muslim. Even the only feet was an evangelist in his church. Ah, I got one by me like that. They will do a Muslim as a Christian. Only feet, God of, and young girl, oh yeah, there are only feet. He said, so when the, 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 the competition was on, the boxing was on, he said I was, it's like other hands were punching me. I didn't know what to do. I had to resort to biting of his ears. 
That was how they revoked his license. You know, look at how he was distracted. He's, the easiest thing to do for the devil is to distract. And you know what? If he wants to distract you, he will try to distract you by what you love. Number six. Let's take one more. Let's close. One more. This one is verse 48 to 50. 48 to 50. Put your blessing upon my stone for mega harvest. Let me read. 48 to 50. Look at that. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hasted and ran towards the Philistine, I mean the army, to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took things, what? A stone, a stone, and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. And David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling, with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of the Now look up. I always tell people, you don't need a mega job to get mega harvest. You don't need it. What you need is the blessing of God on that your little work. What do you need? The blessing of God on what? On your little work. That's what is needed for you to make exploit, to become great. David stone, and what happened? God put his blessing upon that little stone and it brought David down. Are we set to take our last prayer this night? Say after me, oh God, put your blessing Upon my little stone. Now, you will mention what you do. That, Lord, I am a pastor. That is That's my little stone. Now, some of you will say, I'm a teacher. That's my little stone. Some of you will say, I'm a proprietor. That's my little stone. I'm a student. That's my little stone. Lord, I'm a secretary where I'm working. That's my little stone. Put your blessing upon my little stone, oh God. For mega harvest in the name of Jesus. Jump up on your feet and let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. My father, my God, I ask that you put your blessing upon my little stone, oh God. Lord, for mega result. Mega result. Father, this is my little stone. I am a pastor. The senior pastor of gospel evangelical mission. I do my work, oh God, according to your calling upon my life. Father, put your blessing upon my stone for mega harvest in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you talking to the Lord? Your blessing upon my little stone, oh God. Begin to pray. Put your blessing. Upon my little stone, O oh God, Father, for mega harvest. My God, for mega harvest. Asian of days, for mega harvest. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. My Father, with your blessing upon my work, I know I will do great exploit. With your blessing upon my work, I know I will have mega harvest. Put your blessing upon my work, O oh God. Let's begin to pray. Ragada basanda yarabaskenile. Shagada basenile bos. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Father, we thank you. We lift your name on high. We give you all the glory for this wonderful privilege that we have. My Father, help us that we will not miss out of your plan for our lives in Jesus' name. Uphold us, O God. Lord, put your blessing upon our stone. For mega harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you for it is done. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. Praise the Lord. Please have your seats in his presence. Amen. Now let's not forget. Let me.